perhaps this morning, just as the outside world is asking questions, you are still asking questions. It's nice to ask questions. Because that's what differentiates us from outside world. So we tend not to be involved in politics. So what I'm trying to encourage our children to do is that they should be involved in politics as early as possible. Let them sit by you and listen to news. They know what is going on and what is affecting them. And we don't say, oh, we shouldn't be involved because those decisions people make affect our day-to-day -day life. Perhaps you're asking why the Satan was thrown out of heaven in today's world. And Jesus now have to be born and be brought up among us to say, I come to tell you the truth. That Satan that was thrown out of heaven is deceiving you that all we have to live by is gold, gold, bread, and gold. So you, why is it that this happened? You should be asking. What sort of thing is that? Why can't you, as a human being, you just want to come down and finish it once ago? They want a king that is very, very victorious and he's got every gun and everything. And when he says shut up, you know you have to shut up unless you are gone down. But Christ this morning is saying, no, I come to tell you the truth, to show you the way. Um, what sort of thing is that? We are expecting a king that someone that has authority. He conquered death, but he didn't conquer devil. We are still fighting day in, day out in this current world, looking for our God. But when he got up as well and said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemy your food too. So the, the job hasn't been finished. Perhaps every day we face this kind of challenges every time. And God tells us that we should wait, be patient, continue the struggle at the end you will glorify my name. Well, there's no new story from that story of being crucified by the Pilate and the people of Rome. But what you learn for it is the nature of Christ. And for you to know if there's heaven, there's Christ or not Christ, unless it's revealed to you, God minister to your people to know you and understand your way. So to fulfill our expectation that is different from your expectation, that he will come again and rule all the world. In Jesus' name I pray. That name prophecy read, one like a human being who comes with the cloud of heaven and to whom is given dominion, glory, and kingship, the whole people, nation, language to serve him. And John speaks of Jesus as Alpha, Omega, ruler, king of the heart in Revelation reading. Perhaps this is a question we're supposed to be asking. is to come back again. Now, because our expectation initially was expecting some, someone that is like warrior-like. Now he says he's coming back, and when he comes back this time, he will meet our expectation because we come in a cloud. Every, everybody will face down, will be on the ground. 
he will come and we are asking, let him come quickly. Unless if it has revealed to you in dream that you will know that this thing is free. In John, Pilate asked if Jesus is the king of the Jew, to which Jew replied that his kingdom is not from this world. His followers do not need to defend him against his enemy. Or Britannia says the, his kingdom is not from here. What the hell you are talking about? We are expecting you to say your kingdom is not from here. Then that's the problem we are facing. My kingdom is in heaven. So we are expecting you here for goodness sake. You are telling us so <laughs> it, it is a challenge for every one of us because our expectation has not been met. My kingdom is not here. But we are suffering, we are hungry. We, are, we expect that when you come, there, there will not be mischief and everything. But now we are still suffering. Well, what, what was it? So that's what challenging people outside are facing. But we believe and we have faith in God. Perhaps I'm not the only one, but these are the kind of questions people should be asking. And God will reveal himself to you. So Jesus is the king, but the world expectation of king are different, making no sense. What sort of a king is he? What implication does his kingship have on us? As a Christian, we no longer think in terms of king or kingdom, but a mere remnant of faith. That's another challenge for us. Because very soon, you find out that you are just a small number. He said Christian is the largest community and also in the whole world because we've got the Bible, we've had it. But there is going to come a time it will just be remnant. Remnant of faith. Watch out for that. When now we accommodate all sorts of people from different religions and everything, and uh, when you are having two children, they have ten. When you are having, so is that question? I have no problem with that. But the implication where policy maker they say, okay, only the first, the first two child will be getting benefit. Because they know there are some people that will give you 15. And you want to plan and be able to organize. When it comes to voting when they are of age, they will vote you out. We will become pregnant. I'm not trying to be political. I'm just trying to analyze to you certain implications, how people make certain decisions that affect us. And when they make that decision, you need to ask. So asking questions is very good for us. And being involved in politics is very good for us. I do my politics. I send my WhatsApp and information to people. Oh my friend, they think I haven't got a job. Yes, I have a great job. <laughs> but we thank God. Kingship is about power and authority. And we know what power and control is all about. Being in charge ruling, having things done the way we want, being in charge, having our way. Imagine if there are a king, what will you do to influence change? What will you eradicate? Is it hunger or decorating palace? This day we have people that they have the opportunity to rule us. They are only after their own self-interest rather than the common people. But Christ said, my kingship is to benefit everyone. Either you are poor, you are rich. And that one you will trace from his character, his meekness. So perhaps this morning, it's not a new story, but what we want to instill on people is the meekness. When you are young and everything, you see things differently, but it's only when you start going up. You become very prudent. You see things differently. Jesus is a king, but Jesus' king is not about the kind of power of authority. Jesus is quite different sort of king, a meeky king, humble, compassionate. Behold, your king is coming to you, St. Matthew, quoting from the word of prophet. 
Mickey are mounted upon us. In life, let us try to be humble and compassion. That's the light of being a Christian or Christ follower. Me is an unusual word to destroy the king. That's, that's why the conflict arises. We are, we are expecting a warrior for God's sake. You come now begging place. In my question, they will call it mu, 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 mu. somebody that like <laughs> hasn't got anything to offer. They want sharp, 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 and also being that somebody that is, yeah, when he's standing, when he's raw, then you know the king is talking. So what kind of king is Jesus? And what character is rule and kingdom? How will it tell if someone is a Mickey king? These are the making comes to serve and not to be served. If you want to know a good leader, it is someone that takes a lead and not someone that puts his hand. Do this, do this, that. No, no, you should show, you should lead by an example. And you will find that you will have more followers than when you come out and people are running around. Ah, the, the boss is coming. It's only when you are there that they will do the work. But if you are working together and you are related to each other, the job will be done. And you find that's the case? It leads from the front. Unlike our experience of leadership today, it's all about self gain. But this is neither its purpose nor its method. It came not to be served, but to serve, to give its life as a ransom for many. If you are a leader and you believe in yourself, you should be able to suffer, sacrifice your life for other people and lay the foundation of love. Temptation to greatness and power have no hold in him. That's why he came very humble as a child and everything. He was a, his, his idea is not to show I'm this and that. I'm not. He wanted to tell you who Christ is, who God is. Pride, ambition, and self glorification are not in him. In the wilderness, he repeatedly rejected the, tempt, the tempt, uh, temptation of, of Satan to satisfy his name. But we look, we, all the wonderful, we look for gold, 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 bread, 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 bread. Life is not about that alone. Be prudent in whatever you do. We need to hunt, we need to live, we need to make some, some beautiful thing, way of living, but not in necessity. Some will be greedy so much that what the whole nation will feed on, they like it to hold on to it themselves. That's not the way of Christ. It's not about Hugo or advance his own forces. A leader will suffer for all his own people, and you find out that that person will be glorified. Beyond that person's expectation. This is the Mickey King hangs our goal is in abundant life. Compassion and life, that's all his preaches all alone. Love yourself and love God. He longs to save and rescue people. He sees us as a sheep that has to be nurtured and direct as a good shepherd. So full of love and compassion that he's willing even to lay down his life for our own sake. It's only mothers that lay, mostly lay down their life for their children. When it comes to their children, you, you will see a different side of it. And I've seen in that um, on fire, Lanika fire, you can see our grandmother that lay our life just to save our granddaughter. If you are a leader, if you are actually something, you do all these things. Jesus Mickey King teaches his followers to humble themselves because, like a child, little children, 
and to enter the kingdom of God, unless you place yourself in a place of the children, our children, the children. That's when you 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 know you have a different understanding of life. When we are young, you want this, you do this and that. But as soon as you start growing up, your perception of life becomes different. Let the little child come to me, he says, for his is to for it is to such the, the kingdom that kingdom of God belongs to. Those are the people. You have to have a child mind to have an understanding of so many things. I don't know how to put it. You have to have a child of children to understand so many things. So what you think is problem is a big deal for you. After some time, you realize that it's not worth it. All our struggle in this life is come to nothing. Vanity upon vanity. You find out that you've got strength before, now that you are old, you are only looking forward to something, the end of time. You are weak. I want to have this, I want to have that. Have things in moderation. Whoever welcome one such child in my name welcomes me. Humble yourself, he says, for dying and rising are the way of eternal life. Death is good. It saves us from so many things, but we, no one likes to die. <laughs> it saves us from so many things, all the hassle of life. And God doesn't see death as a problem. It's just that you are moving to another level, eternal, eternal life. Arrow grass power, cleanse to it, employ violence to maintain it. That's what we, we get around the world. Like, you know, Trump kind of ruling. In Africa, you have lots, lots of them like that. That they see it, that nothing else can happen. They will, they will be there forever. But Jesus Christ is telling us that do things in moderation. Exercise a discipline and calm life in the face of evil. We will all be facing challenges every day. People will allege against us. There will be people that we, because they want to control your life. Or it's for you to be focused and know whatever you want to do in Christ. Jesus, the Mickey King, creates a community of love, meekness, humility, of, and patience for love, suffering, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Your family is the most person that will make you <laughs> wanting to. <laughs> To, to not forgive somebody. Because when, when you are dealing with your family, it's, it's those that offend you more than people outside. If you're outside, you just mean me, I have no business with you, I hide. But why is it that you have to practice forgiveness? Because the core people that will offend you are your family and a close one. If a way of Christ, we have to follow it. Show love, love your God, be compassionate, humble, Practice, forgiveness, and reconciliation all the time. For ordinary life of those who follow is embrace gentle quality, such as kindness, goodness, and humility, and love. There should be a community of justice, holiness, and blessing. That is what Christ is asking us to do. Jesus is the main king gentle and humble in heart, visible sign of God in us should be shown all the time. So to reflect your life as a Christ follower. May God grant us spirit that emulates Jesus' way of life. That is why we are here. Yes, it was alleged uh, wrongly judged, but it's a way of life. People will allege against you. 
people will show you because you are dirty, you are dirty, they will take you for granted. They will misconstrue what you have. It's up to you to prove that I belong to Christ. And there is Christ in meekness and being humble. Let's be humble and welcome everybody regardless of their class or shade. May God help us. Amen.